Hi, this is Josh. I'm a pharmacist with PharmacistTips.com. Uh, talk a little bit about oral diabetes medications or some of the common treatments for type 2 diabetics. First off, this is uh, information only. Be sure you always talk to your doctor or healthcare professional before you make any changes in your medicines, or your diet, or your lifestyle. Metformin is the first medicine we'll talk about. It is usually the first line treatment. It's the most common medicine used uh, to treat type 2 diabetes as well as prediabetes. Uh, they use this to try to slow down the um, developing type 2 diabetes. The most common side effect by far is uh, stomach upset and diarrhea. Metformin works by blocking the production of glucose in the liver. It also inhibits the absorption of glucose in the colon, and it has uh, been shown to increase insulin sensitivity, meaning your body utilizes the insulin in your system better than it previously has. Now, the key to metformin is to start low and go slow. The stomach upset that we talked about, it takes a while for your body to build up some tolerance to that. So the target dose is usually 2,000 to 2,500 milligrams. Typically, you start out with 500 milligrams a week, you know, a day for a week, and then each week you add 500 milligrams till you get up to the target dose. Again, that's between you and your healthcare provider, um, but uh, usually slowly increasing your dose will increase the tolerance of that. Sometimes a B12 deficiency uh, can occur with metformin. And of course, other side effects are possible. I have a more detailed video on metformin if you want to see that. The next class of medication, sulfonyl ureas. This often is added to metformin. They stimulate the pancreas to produce insulin. Uh, the second generation is often what we see used anymore. We're talking glimepiride, glipizide, gliburide. The glipizide is available in immediate release or extended release formulation. Um, now these can cause hypoglycemia or low blood sugar, so we do have to be cautious about that. If for some reason you're not going to eat or you're sick or you know you can't keep any food down, typically your sulfonylurea dose would be skipped. Any questions, uh, you know, contact your healthcare provider, or your pharmacist. Weight gain is possible. Anything that increases the amount of insulin in the system uh, can cause some weight gain. Pyoglitazone. Um, in the U.S. that's sold under the brand name, brand name Actos. Um, this is a low risk for hypoglycemia. Um, some things that can happen, it can cause some fluid retention, some heart failure. Over time, uh, there's some concern it may weaken the bones. What this does is it increases the sensitivity uh, to insulin, especially in the fat tissue and muscle tissue. So um, it helps your body utilize the existing insulin better. Um, but watch out, especially a heart failure with that fluid retention. Um, oftentimes, if, if you're in that tough shape, this would have to be discontinued, but be sure to talk to your doctor. Alpha-glucosidase inhibitors, what they do is they slow carbohydrate absorption uh, from the gut. Carbo is a precose, um, probably most common. Very, very low risk of hypoglycemia, and not uh, too much of an issue of your blood pressure or blood sugar going too low with this. Uh, it should be taken with food. But the limiting uh, side effects are the diarrhea and flatulence. Um, when that carbohydrate isn't absorbed out of the colon, um, some of the natural bacteria kind of ferment that and can cause some uncomfortable GI symptoms. Gliptins. Gliptins cause uh, insulin to release in response to high blood sugar. They can also kind of increase the sense of fullness and slow stomach emptying. The nice thing is there's little risk for low blood sugar. Uh, hypoglycemia can be an issue. We don't want wild blood sugar swings because then you eat carbohydrates to bring your blood sugar back up and it turns into a vicious cycle. Uh, some risk for pancreatitis. Now we do see a risk of pancreatitis with a lot of the diabetes medications. So the pancreas is involved in the disease. So we need to be mindful of that and mitigate uh, the chance for that occurring. Uh, again, caution with heart failure with a lot of these diabetes medications. And uh, sometimes we see joint pain. If that's an issue, be sure you speak to your healthcare provider. Some of the common gliptins uh, we see in the US, they're often paired with metformin. 
Uh, we see Genuvia or Janumet, the one with metformin, Anglyza, Comaglyza, Trigenta. Uh, these are the most common that we see. There are others available. Flozins, uh, they cause the body to excrete glucose in the urine. Um, so it just shuttles it right out of the body. The body doesn't have to deal with it. It does increase the risk for fungal and yeast infections, so keep that in mind, and can also increase the risk of UTI or urinary tract infections. Nice thing, these are associated with weight loss, which can only improve diabetes, um, and it may reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, diabetics are at higher risk of cardiovascular disease, so this is good news as well. Maybe a risk of bladder cancer. Um, time will tell. It's uh, uncertain at this point. And we need to use caution with poor kidney function, which unfortunately, as diabetes progresses, uh, kidney function often gets worse. So it, it's a common theme you see with a lot of these medications, and that's something your doctor or healthcare provider should monitor. So some of the common flows uh, in Bocana, or one with metformin and Bocamet. Farsiga, Jardia, those are the ones we see here in the U.S. Diet and exercise. All right, now stay with me. This is where I lose a lot of people. We, uh, you know, as a pharmacy profession, we didn't really study that a lot in school. We didn't talk about it a lot, but a little bit can go a long ways. I've seen people make dramatic improvements in their type 2 diabetes by just making small changes. One thing is drinking calories, soda and juice probably just doesn't have a place in a type 2 diabetics diet. Um, it's just too easy to take in too many calories. It, you know, it's just liquid calories. You can chug them in just a minute and then your body has to deal with all those extra calories on board. You know, try to eat the whole vegetables and fruits. And you can get a lot of those nutrients from vegetables um, as opposed to fruit. You know, I, I think fruit should probably be limited. Again, talk to your doctor. I'm not a dietitian, but I, I've just seen people make tremendous improvements by eliminating these things from the diet. Strength training. We're not talking about becoming a muscle head here. Simple, you know, just a small pair of weights, build up your muscles a little bit. Muscle burns glucose when you're just sitting. So the more muscle mass you have on your frame, the more glucose your body can handle. Walking and low impact cardio can make a huge improvement. A 15 minute walk in the morning or a bike ride or rowing or some aerobics in a pool, you can find something, you know. Um, I know it's hard. Uh, I understand how difficult it is to change, uh, to make changes. We are creatures of habit, but I've seen just tremendous improvements in diabetes by making some small changes. So certainly worth a chat with your doctor, uh, see what they think that you could do, and um, and then they would monitor your medications. I appreciate you watching. Um, you know, always talk with your healthcare provider. Any questions, worried about side effects? Um, I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.